know, if, if you see there's there's something different, the theory's not wrong, you can't blame preferences, there might be like a shadow price. You know, the current price. <laughs> yeah, so that's exactly... Maybe there's a, a planet hiding out. That's exactly the perspective. Yeah. Remind me again of your name. David Hampton? David Hampton. Yep. That, so that's it. I think that's exactly... Um, that's exactly, you know, sort of how these things line up with one another. Is that Becker's exactly saying that, you know, you always have to complete the theory in some way. The theory itself of rationality and whatever doesn't itself have content. The question is, what costs do we take into account? And sort of anytime we see an inconsistency between economic theory and, you know, some thing in the world, we can try to, like, find a way to account for the costs that might have led to that type of behavior. And, and therefore, economists avoid thinking about shifts in preferences, about things like luck, or about confusion from uh, by consumers. Now, I don't think this is necessarily the only approach, or even the best approach to thinking about problems, but what I do hope is that in the spirit of Putnam, you'll find that this way of approaching problems is a quite useful discipline on your thinking, um, that it provides sort of a powerful baseline against which to compare things which aren't really consistent uh, with it, and that it provides a pretty useful approach for analyzing even problems that are not traditionally thought of as economic problems. So to give some examples of that, let's go through the ones that Becker discusses in the article. So, um, David, why don't you um, tell me what Becker says about health, about how many people make decisions about health. Oh, um, just talking about like how long they want to live. Yeah. Like he was he was saying like yeah, there's there's really no like everything is more or less a suicide because yeah. your death could have been prevented if you would have just allocated more resources. You know, like I I take a risk when I like drive in my car or walk through Hyde Park at night. If I really wanted to live longer, I would you know exactly I'm sure that. Yeah, so he argues that basically every death is in some sense voluntary because. You know, we make just choices between death and money all the time, even if it's only a small chance of death, or between death and having some, you know, exciting experience. And so the distinction between natural death and suicide is a bit uh, odd. And in fact, we can predict the types of choices that people make along some of these dimensions, depending on what their wages are, depending on what their education is, and so forth. Purely economic factors will influence how much risky behavior people take with their lives. Um, so, uh, is Jung Min here? No. So, um, what Becker also talks about marriage, and he argues that economic considerations also influence uh, whether people are going to get married, whether they're going to get divorced, when they're going to get married and divorced, and that it really works very much like in a competitive market. I, you know, get the partner who uh, who I'm able to beat out all the competition for, uh, and who I prefer the most. And, you know, uh, if there becomes, say, you know, more women relative to men uh, at a place, uh, or men, more men relative to women, like at MIT, um, there, will, there will be a lot higher uh, price in terms of the value of the man that you get uh, for, for a given uh, quality of, of woman. Um, and that there's... Uh, we should expect to see that along dimensions where you would think that within the couple there would be complementary things, for example, education. You would think that people like to be with other educated people because, you know, educated people like talking about things and having... We, we would expect that more educated people would marry other more educated people. But that controlling for that, money is probably a substitute because people have concave utility of consumption, and so you would think that people, given their education, would marry people with quite different in incomes from them. And these are exactly the sorts of predictions we see borne out in, in data. And finally, um, Friedman, I mean, uh, Becker talks about uh, how ideas respond to incentives, how professors, you should always follow the money. Who's paying for what the professor is doing? What jobs does he think he's going to be able to get if he takes certain positions? Rather than viewing the sort of things that I say as disinterested, you should think about what are my interests in telling you the things that I'm telling you, right? Um, okay. So, um, these uh, applications, as well as the more traditional applications of economics, use a variety of more specialized skills that you're going to learn during this course. 
So to give you a sense uh, for the types of things, questions that you'll answer using these more specialized skills just to motivate you, I want to give you sort of a list of real world problems that the government has to deal with, that the public in our you know, society right now has to deal with, that you'll be talking to people you know, on, uh, around campus about, that I hope that through this class you'll be able to talk about in a much clearer and more coherent way. Um, and in particular, these will be problems that will come up in your problem sets, on your exams, or in class. So these include, how much debt should a company take on? You know, if you become a financier after this, you're going to have to help companies decide how much debt to take on. Hopefully this class will help you think about that. Does it make sense to have sort of special tax breaks, like, you know, deductions for uh, being a homeowner, or for uh, giving to charity, or for, um, you know, being a single mother? When, when do those types of things make sense? Um, to what extent does the existence of prestige for certain activities uh, correct for failures of the market? Or how should it correct for those? Um, should, uh, in an auction, should everybody be able to participate and have the same chance of winning depending on what they bid? Or should some, some people have a handicap and other people have an have a, uh, advantage? Um, when should companies give discounts for buying more of a product? When should you get quantity discounts? or loyalty discounts. How progressive should the tax system be? Should we have a tax, extra tax on millionaires or not? Um, uh, how generous should unemployment benefits be? How long should they last and how much of wages should they replace? Um, what's the right mix of direct subsidies for research and development, say of green technologies, or how much should we rely on intellectual property <coughs> to reward people for innovating? Um, does it make sense for internet companies to be losing money early on uh, and then making it up later? Or should that be an indication if an internet company is currently losing money that it's a bad investment? Um, when should, under what circumstances should we let two companies merge with one another? Or when will that actually be too harmful to competition to justify whatever benefits it has? Um, when is eminent domain necessary in order to get property together so we can build a bridge or a road or a research facility? And when is it sort of an undue violation of property rights? Um, when should we be harsher on collusion or cartels that raise prices versus just any other uh, company that would raise these prices? Um, and when is voting a good way to make a collective decision? Or when are there more efficient ways of doing it? So um, in order to be able to answer these types of questions, you're going to have to master a bunch of skills during the class. And as I'm running a little low on time, I'll go through these pretty quickly. But these will include um, thinking about how firms behave. Uh, what, do they maximize profits? Are there internal conflicts within firms? How does this depend on how they're financed? Which we'll talk about on Thursday. Uh, what are the costs of production? How does this depend on the production technology? Um, and how do we represent this graphically? Uh, how much do companies supply to the market? And how does this depend on the length of time that they expect to be supplying that amount for? <coughs> um, and that we'll talk about the long run and the short run and so forth. Um, what companies make what profits? And how does that depend on the different companies and the total amount supplied to the market? Uh, and how does that relate to individual amounts that the individual companies are supplying? As well as what are sort of empirical regularities about the size of uh, different companies. Um, we'll talk about market equilibrium, uh, the benefits of international trade, the efficiency properties, of markets and when markets work better than government planning. Um, we'll talk about uh, externalities and different ways of internalizing these, such as Hagovian taxes, uh, cap and trade systems, liability damages uh, in a legal sense. Um, and uh, we'll talk about how we actually go about figuring out how much of an externality is caused by any given activity. Uh, both through scientific studies, um, like those of global warming, and from actually getting information from people, say using surveys and other things like that. We'll then talk about monopoly theory 
and why monopolists tend to reduce the amount uh, produced and, and therefore harm uh, welfare, and how that's uh, related to what they um, uh, to how they respond to taxes and subsidies that are given to them. We'll talk about price discrimination when companies charge different prices to different consumers or different prices for different amounts that people purchase and when that's efficient and inefficient, and how that relates to tax policy and to the criminal justice system. We'll talk about the design of products, uh, how companies choose not just how much or what price to sell at, but what quality of product to supply or what types of products to supply. Um, we'll talk about regulation of monopolies. So, uh, how to make sure that they don't charge too high prices, um, and when it makes sense to regulate, and how that's related to the insurance market and some of the things uh, that have come up related to Obamacare. Um, we'll talk about intellectual property and how to reward new innovation, when intellectual property is the right way and when other systems are preferable. Um, we'll talk about oligopoly, when there's a small number of companies competing against one another, um, and different models of that, as well as about competition policy, how by preventing companies from merging, preventing companies from colluding, we can help make markets more competitive and why we choose to do that. We'll also talk about the redistribution of resources, why uh, people believe in that, uh, the you know, extent of inequality, and how that can be mitigated by redistribution, what optimal tax rates that do that are, how we can think about putting you know, a tax on the rich. Um, and finally, about the provision of public goods, why the private sector doesn't do this very well, and uh, what's the right way for the public sector to correct it. So anyways, thanks so much, uh, and I look forward to having you all in class. See you on Thursday.